Hello, once again, happy Saturday, everybody. Cutting to this a little close, but as I'm recording this video, it's Friday afternoon, so I was going to do this yesterday or the day before. We're going to knock them out, but I've been kind of busy yesterday. I was hardly couldn't walk around the house for Thursday because I went to the store on Wednesday and whew. I must have stepped the wrong way or something, and yesterday I couldn't hardly walk on my right foot. <laughs> but today is Saturday, March the 6th, and it's video number 285. Today we're going to be breaking bread. Now, tomorrow's video through Thursdays is going to be we're going to be talking about another classic hymn. So I'm letting you I'm letting you know that's going to be a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. A five, another five-day classic hymn study. So be looking forward to that tomorrow. Starting tomorrow to Thursday. I'm going to try to get them, get them knocked out right here. That way I can go ahead and I'll post them later on. But get them, put, get them set up, ready to go for the week. So, But today we're going to be breaking bread. We're starting off with Matthew, the book of Matthew, verse 26 I mean, chapter 26, verse 26. So it's 26, 26 of Matthew. And it just happened to be my brother's name is Matthew. So we got biblical names. It's Matthew Mark. Get it? And then I'm Joseph David. So that's the way our names are. That's the way, the way our mother named us. So. And you always got ridiculed when you said, this is Matthew Mark. And everybody, everybody just it, teasing him, teasing my mother. So, where's Luke and John? Where's Luke and John? <laughs> Get it? Or John Luke? If you can put it like that, but there was no Luke John. <laughs> I was put. There's supposed to have been two, two other siblings between me and my brother, but they never. They were never, what do they call that? They never came to existence. One almost did, and another one, uh, and the other one was fizzled out in the development. One was a miscarriage, and the other one was a, didn't even, it. Lost it somewhere in the development. So, and one was one of them was supposed to be. Uh, her name was supposed to be Sarah Ruth. <laughs> and then I don't know the other, the other name, but there was there was supposed to be two girls in between me and my brother, but girls just never. God just. God had other plans, so. But breaking bread, Matthew 26, 26. Sorry about that little, I don't know where I got off with that little discussion, but sorry for that, I've been rambling. But let's, let's, get, let's get into it. Breaking bread, Matthew 26, 26. And, they, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. You know how you always, you're in church services, if you go to church, and you have the Lord's, you, you observe the Lord's Supper, which my church would always observe it every month, once a month. But they would say, take, eat, this is my body. And they, whatever kind of bread, crackers or something that they use, that usually, in my church, we either had, we used to have these little round communal disc or whatever kind of had a little mark in it we used to have those and then here lately the last few times I've done it we've had these little little, they're like little tablets so they're like little chiclets <laughs> but they're little pieces of communal bread that the, the way they make them and then of course when you uh, do the you do the drinking of the wine We'd always have like grape juice. That's the way we would do it. 
And that, that's that's formal. It's whatever the church, the, the pastor wants it to, how he wants it done. Whichever way the Lord leads him and the staff to to use. I've been, I'm, I see the church I went to at World Life. I had a couple, a couple times I was in church on Sunday, and they did the Lord's Supper. Well, they had crackers. They would just take regular saltine crackers, or unsalted, I think that's what it was. And then they would take each cr little small cracker, break them up in little, little, little pieces, and then you get, reach in, you grab you a, a good sized piece, and that's what you, what what you would do for bread. So, it's whatever it's whatever the church feels led to use. I hope you have. I've hoped you you have done the same. So this is the first. This verse is the first of twelve specific references to the breaking of the bread in the New Testament. So there are several. They're saying there's twelve references to the breaking of the bread, each reminding the participants of Christ's sacrificial death. And although Paul had not been present at the Last Supper. He had evidently received a special revelation concerning it. 1 Corinthians 11, 23, and 24 it says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, literally while he was being betrayed, took the bread, and when he get, had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me, and that's on our, and that's basically on our, our table that we keep at the foot of the uh, podium, at the my pastor speaks from. We've got a little table where we keep uh, bouquets of flowers and stuff. That table actually says, "This do in remembrance of me," and then I think that's the table they use. When we do the Lord's Supper, so it's always fitting to use that too. But it's a it's a beautiful table. I think I think that church, the church itself, has had that table for since the church was founded. So it's a beautiful table. And all you uh, people that do go to Grace Bible, Grace Bible Baptist Church here in Leesburg. You know what table I'm talking about. So it's a beautiful table. I love that table. I've known about that table for ye for half my life or most of my life. Since what? Probably the nineties? Maybe the eighties when I got uh, baptized. I've known about that table most of my life. And here it is going on forty years, so so at least 30, 30, 35 years I've known about that table. So, and I think it's just, I think it's just the exact table. If it is, you people at Grace Bible, let me know in the comments below my post when I share this video, or if you can't uh, comment on the YouTube channel. Go back to the Facebook post and go down and comment and tell me how long that table has been, been in the church. For some of you older people, the older, not older, but some of the older members that's been in that church for since, almost since it was founded, would know. So let me know in the comments section below, whichever way you, you could do it, so. Okay, so the similar drinking of the cup recalled them to the shed blood, and all this helped them to remember and appreciate the great reality of the eternal life imparted to them through his death. For he said, said, Whoso eat my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. John 6, 54. Hey, 6, 5, 4. <laughs> I love it when I find numbers that they're, they're in sequential order. It's like one two three or three two one. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty neat. 
And today is, you know, not, now yesterday, if you had put, you had lined up the numbers, um, the fourth day of March, third month, which is March, the fourth day, the third month, and then the 21 of the year, if you put them together, it's like you were saying, four, three, two, one. <laughs> I saw somebody post, somebody shared that on Facebook somewhere on, on last night. And that's the way you do it. You put you put the day, the month, and the year together. You had four, three, two, one. And if you put three, twenty, one, you would have three, two, one. <laughs> So I, I like numbers. I, I like to see sequential numbers in the verses when you put the verses up there. So like this saying, chapter 6, verse 54, that's 6, 5, 4. <laughs> so for, for a while after his resurrection and empowering by the Holy Spirit, Acts 2.46 says, They continuing day with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house seem to have been seem to have combined each day this remembrance of the Lord's Supper with their own evening meals. And sometime later, it seems to have been upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, as you see in Acts 20, verse 7. But there is no specific instruction in the Scripture as to how often this breaking of bread should be observed. Like I said, our church family does it once a month, so... But when it is herb, the implied action of discerning the Lord's body, giving thanks to him for his sacrifice for us, and judging ourselves, 1 Corinthians 11, 29, and 31, are far more vital than the physical act of eating the broken bread. So it, it basically is just a, a simple remembrance of the Lord's Supper, how he broke the bread and he gave the, the cup of wine to the disciples to remember this moment to remember that moment the last supper but you break the bread like you eat of the body and then you drink the, the wine which is grape juice or whatever kind of juice y'all other people use you drink the juice and that's like you're drinking of the blood and you're remembering Christ himself. He said, this do in remembrance of me. So, that is all I have for today's session. So I hope, sorry for some of the long rambling points. Excuse me, sorry about that. But, I figured I'd get that out of the way. So, and like I said, tomorrow, for Sunday, March 7th, and video number... 286 we're going to be beginning a, another classic hymn study from tomorrow until Thursday and we're going to talk, be talking about the, the hymn There is a Fountain and that's tomorrow's title There is a Fountain most of the time with these hymns they put the title up there and you can find the title in that little um portion of the hymn that they put down there for you to say. But there is a fountain, and we're going to begin with Revelation 21 verse 6 tomorrow's video. I'll, I'm hopefully going to be able to get all that in this session because in just a little while my, my brother will be home and we usually go out to eat on Friday nights and he'll probably come in and want to go right back out. I'm hopefully going to be able to get them all done before he gets home. So let me quit rambling and get them get them out of the way. That way, I ain't got to worry about them. I got this one done so I could post it tomorrow for today's video. It's a Sunday. This is Thursday afternoon, and I can later on this evening from recording of this, I could get it posted for today. So, have it posted for 7 o'clock, like I normally do. Or no, 10 o'clock. That's right. Weekends are 10 o'clock. Weekdays are 7 o'clock. So. 
but we're going to be doing, there is a fountain. And I don't believe, we're going to do five verses. And I don't think there's a chorus to it, but it's going to do five verses. And when I, um, when I go to post these, I will put the verses down in the um, description box. I will put the verse down there so you could scroll. As I get to that point in the video, scroll down to the, in the description. If you're on YouTube, scroll down to the description and find the verse and, and read along with the verse. Or sing along, however you want to do it. But that's how I did the last one. And then the last day on Thursday, I will put the the fifth verse up there. Then I'll turn right around down there and put all five verses together because I'll do the I'll do them all together on Thursday. So so with that said, I love you and I appreciate you. Keep on keeping on and trusting God and keeping safe. And trust me, there is a reason if you're not. If you're not safe, if you're battling something, some kind of sickness or virus or whatever you want to call it, and for some reason you're having to do that for a particular reason, figure out what that is and you'll be fine. But once again, peace out. Until tomorrow, everybody. <whistles> Goodbye. God bless and have a wonderful Saturday and a wonderful weekend and upcoming week too. So, see you tomorrow. Goodbye.